Thanks for joining me today on Underwater Aardvark. Today we're going to be drawing a watercolour giraffe. Today I thought we'd do something a little different than some of the other drawings that I've been doing on the channel. Uh, we're going to do something a little more realistic but still has some of the aesthetics of the cartoon with the outline and so on. But I am going to use a different type of watercolors that I've been using. And to start, what I'm going to do is just draw the basic outline uh, and the details using a watercolor pencil. So what I'm doing here is um, just blocking in some of the shapes, looking at the head, kind of getting a, you know, a general shape of what the head looks like mostly starting with a circle and just doing some of like the muzzle and other things that just uh, it puts all the basic elements together so I can then start working on the details. Okay, so we'll speed this up a little bit just so you can see generally what I'm doing. Now this tool is called an iris and I purchased this recently that uh, allows you to draw all kinds of really cool circles. It's, it's a phenomenal tool but lately I've just been using the outside of the tool ironically but uh, in some drawing at some point I'll show you how this can work. Okay, so I'm just blocking in the colors now with some watercolor. What I'm doing is I'm actually using a very limited palette. It's called a Zone palette, where I'm actually only using four colors. Now traditionally it's yellow ochre, or a yellow. Uh, I'm using cadmium red, it's normally just a, a red, a black, and a white. What I'm doing is I'm actually using uh, three watercolors, but I'm using a gouache for the white. Now gouache is a water soluble paint. What it is, it's, it's opaque. Water colors are very transparent. Gouache is opaque. So by mixing those colors with the gouache, I can paint over the top and give some highlights, which you'll see a little later on. I've actually cheated a little bit. I'm not using black. I'm using a color that's called Payne's Gray. Payne's Gray is more of a, a blue gray. So if you have a look at the three colors I have, I've got a, a yellow, I've got a red, I've actually got a kind of blue. So I can really create any type of color that I want, but very limited in the way that those colors will 
uh, be applied into the paper. And sometimes just to get better at something, which I'm trying to do, is to limit your color palette so you can really concentrate on the technique and get better at it. At this point, I've laid out the basic color. Now I'm just putting in some shadows. Uh, so I'm kind of looking at the light coming from behind the giraffe a little bit. I would normally draw an outline uh, with the pen. I really like these brush pens. And you can see just next to my, my hand on the left that it's just sitting on the table. And the way that it works, it, it works like a, like a brush, but I'm trying to try something where I'm using outlines in a, a cartoon sort of way, but very comic book way, but then also doing some realism. And you'll see in later episodes, some of these drawings are also just realistic animals, but in a, in a sort of human setting. So I'm just trying something different. I'm really just drawing for myself, really enjoying the process and getting used to these, uh, these artist quality watercolors. So now what I'm doing is just adding a little bit more detail putting the, uh, the spots of the giraffe on, and you can see that I'm actually using more pigment. What I do is I make a mistake. It's not that I make a mistake, I really lose control of the, the paint, and I've applied it just a bit too thick, I'm trying to wipe it off, I'm trying to do all sorts of things, and I'm just thinking, should I just rip this out? This is driving me insane. I feel like I've lost the shadow. There's a whole bunch of things that are, are falling apart on this painting. And I'm literally going, I hate this. This is so not working out. Now it's at this point where I just realized I didn't put the outline in. So I've been waiting for it to uh, dry and I decide to uh, do the outline. Okay, so what I'm thinking here is I've got this circle in the background and I just want to give it a bit of context. So uh, by mixing some Payne's Grey with the yellow ochre, I can start creating some sort of greens and I decide to start painting on some trees. And by just squiggling, I'm not focusing particularly on any leaf or, or type of tree. It's just more of an aesthetic in the background. Now I realize that it's a little bit unbalanced. So what I decide to do is to uh, paint in some, some more in there. Ideally, what I should have done is planned it first and not on the right hand side, not done the trees so high, should have just kept them low. But it still, it works out. And again, it's a sketchbook. The idea is that it's, this isn't meant to be something that, you know, is gonna be put on someone's wall or sold for, you know, a hundred bucks or whatever. It's just something that allows me to get better at my craft and, and show you too that even though you can make mistakes, things go wrong, it all comes together. It all works out in the end, but not to give up, never give up. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like, subscribe. If there's anything particularly you want me to draw or if you like this format, just let me know. If there's anything that I could do to improve the channel for you guys, I'd love to hear from you. Thanks very much and I'll see you next week.